Hello and welcome to Lapham Gymnasium here at Shawnee High School for tonight's matchup between the Crestview Knights and the Shawnee Indians. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And Dave, week one is come and gone. All the excitement of the opening tip, the anticipation uh, of everything that goes into that opening night has already gone. It's what I like to call adjustment week. Coaches have had that first look at their teams on the floor, what went right, what went wrong, and they spent a week in the gym correcting them. Excited to see what both of these coaches have come up with here tonight. Nate, couldn't agree with you more. It's great to be your wingman tonight. Great Friday night non-league action after double weekends for both squads last weekend. Great week of preparation and development with your team. Both coaches, Coach Etzler and um, – Coach Triplett saw what they had last week. Now they know they have their baseline. They know what they need to improve upon. They want to see that improvement tonight. Let's take a look at tonight's keys of the game, starting first with the Crestview Knights. Well, the Crestview Knights, they want to start off by taking it to the streets. We're going to go with the song by the Doobie Brothers. But to be more seriously, it's the first game on the road for this Crestview squad in a great venue in Lappin Gymnasium. The young players for the Knights will need to play big. Secondly, turn down the sheets. We're talking about senior Connor and junior Wren Sheets hold down the interior for the Knights in their two-post offense. Combined, they're shooting 66% from the floor. They will be a challenge tonight for the Indians. And then third, take the keys as in the car keys. Defensively, the Knights must defend the drive as the Indians can put the ball on the floor and attack the glass. One-on-one -on -one dri driving line defensive principles and grit must be on display if Crestview wants to enjoy the bus ride back to Convoy tonight. Chris, you stayed perfect last weekend going 2-0. What does Shawnee need to do tonight to come away with the victory? Well, staying with that first key being a song title, we're going to go with Kenny Chesney's living in fast forward. Coach Triplett would like to see this team have a better start. That was a situation that occurred more often than not last year, and it carried over a little bit last week and in the tip-off classic. He wants to see this home opener for the Indians serve as a remedy for that malady. Secondly, the law of averages. To aid in that fast start, good shooting is key. Coach Triplett sees great potential in this team's ability to shoot the rock at a better clip. Players rewarding themselves for the work they put in and seeing the ball go through the cotton is not a question of will it happen, but when. Coach Tripp will take it starting tonight. And then finally, be ready to grind. As we said, Crestview has that two-post offense, which is rare in today's high school game. That'll test your defensive intensity. Shawnee must be solid, solid at that end of the floor on the Knights who will look to exploit overplays and mistakes. Out tough the Knights defensively, and Shawnee will have a great opportunity to be on top of the scoreboard after 32 minutes. It is almost time for Friday Night Hoops. When we return, we'll have tonight's opening tip and the starters. We'll be back on WOSA. Welcome back to Lapin Gymnasium, where the Crestview Knights and Shawnee Indians are just about to get underway. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen as tonight's starters are being announced. We'll take a look at them as well, starting first with the Crestview Knights. They are going to start at number 33, Ren Sheets. Ren is having a tremendous season off to a incredibly fast start tonight. Be interesting to see if he continues that here in the early going. Also, number three, Kellen Putnam. Number 44, Connor Sheets in the middle. Number 11, Jarrett Harding. And number 10, Tommy Hefner. They're starting five for the Shawnee Indians. They are going to bring out number 23, Beckett Berkey. Number 34, Alex Goldberry. Number four, Dominic Lynch. Number two, Nick Pazon. And number zero, Trevitt Berkey. Trevitt, the freshman for Shawnee, got his first taste of varsity last week. Friday night, you could tell just, ha I mean, he looks the part. He belongs out there. But every freshman on their first night, they have those freshmen, kind of those jitters almost. And you could tell he was working through that. But he stayed with it. He played really well. His brother Beckett played phenomenal. Really helped lead that comeback against Elida to get Shawnee that victory. They're going to need both of those guys to come up big tonight against Crestview. They are, Nate, and you're right. We talked about in the pregame that growth from week one to week two. A freshman like Trevick 
Berkey can really step up here and be much more comfortable at home as well. You know, he's watched that tip-off classic for years. I'm sure he was chomping at the bit to play in it. Now he's got the opportunity to be on the home wood tonight, and he's going to be ready to go. And on the other side, we mentioned Ren Sheets, a phenomenal player, been able to watch him grow over the years, but the start that he is having to this season is just next level. Yeah, Ren is averaging 23 points per game after the double weekend last uh, weekend, 85% field goal percentage. That is incredible. Crestview defeated Miller City on Saturday night in overtime. They scored 18 points in overtime. Ren Sheets had 14 of those 18 points on the way to leading Crestview to that victory. Athletes on both sides of the ball here tonight. We have scorers. We know both of these teams. They can play defense. The coaches pride themselves in the defensive effort out of both sides. Should be a tremendous matchup as the opening tip is here. Everybody getting lined up and matched up. Our officials for tonight's game, David DeBerry, he's going to toss it up, and then Dick Anderson and Dave Benfield will round out our officiating crew. Shawnee will control the opening tip. Beckett Berkey will bring it up for Shawnee. Berkey looking to try to get it over to Pazon. Pazon had a nice job from behind the arc last weekend. As at least early going, you talked about wanting to get the shooting going. He was one of the few Indians that was able to get off to a hot, st a hot start last week. Yes, and Crestview's going to contest that shooting with their patented man-to-man -man defense. Berkey running the offense. And as most of what Shawnee will do will run through him tonight. Nice long opening offensive possession here for the Indies. Not trying to force anything, doing a nice job of just moving it around, seeing what Crestview will give them. Yeah, good patience. But Lynch looking to attack a little bit right there. The defensive effort from Crestview here in the early going, very impressive. They've come in, locked in. Sometimes defense can lag a little bit, but not so far here for Crestview. Goldsberry pulls up for three. That one's good. Alex Goldsberry for three to start the scoring for the Indians. Yeah, he shoots 33% after uh, weekend number one, the two games, but looked real good right there from behind the arc. Now it's Crestune's turn. First time down the floor. Get the ball inside the Sheets. Sheets kicks it back out. Long shot on its way. That one's going to be off. Ends up in the hands of Travick Berkey. He pushes it up to Beckett. Beckett looks to get to the baseline, loses the basketball. Crestview comes up with the turnover. Jarrett Harding with the basketball. Gets it down to Connor Sheets. Back to Harding. Harding struggled a little bit last week. Would like to see that first one to fall. Doesn't do so right there. He had 13 assists, but really didn't dent the scoring uh, column much last week. Now Shawnee back on offense. Now to the early 3-0 lead. Beckett's going to slow things down a little bit. He's on now. Look to go inside. Nowhere going, though, is Crestview's defense playing very tight, getting their arms into those passing lanes. Doesn't have a lot of places to go with it. That one gets tipped. Ends up in the hands of Hartling. Hartling all the way in for the easy two. Yeah, that's what Jer Harding needs to see. A transition bucket there gets on the scoreboard. That may get him going. That transition bucket, that's something that Coach Triplett said we've got to eliminate against the Knights. They give up a light ball turnover right there in the Knights score. Lynch attacks the basket. He's going to be fouled. They're going to say he was in the act of shooting that time, so he's going to go to the free throw line. He'll have two Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throws. Yeah, we see Dominic Lynch on the Union Bank instant replay attacking the rim. That's the key, as we said, one of the keys for the Knights. Limiting the one-on-one -on -one driving line, Dominic Lynch, he's got an attitude in attacking the rim, does so right there, and nails the free throw from the Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw line. Dom steps up, able to knock down the first. Second shot on its way, and it is good. Shawnee on top, 5-2 to two here early in the first quarter. And they've played man-to-man -man up to this point, but on this possession, after the made free throw, Shawnee going to go with their 1-2-2 zone. After moves it over, Putnam gets rid of it. Right now, Crestview just has to move it around the perimeter because of this defense from Shawnee. 1-2-2 two, two zone with a lot of attention being paid to number 33, Ren Sheets. They're in the middle of that zone. 
Hefner pulls it back out as Crestview looks to reset. Thought about a three-pointer to Kellen Putnam, but decides to pull it back down. And it looks like Crestview right now not really sure where they want to get the basketball as Shawnee's done a nice job of cutting off Ren Sheets. Here's Hefner. Gets back into the middle. That one's tips. Ends up into the hands of Berkey. Yeah, good deflection by the Shawnee defense. They come up with the turnover. Lynch gets rid of it. Goldsberry driving the lane. Can't connect. That one a little bit of a wild shot. Now it's Crestview's turn. Harding off the glass. Gets that one to go. Yeah, Jared Harding picks up his second field goal. That's more than he had combined in games one and two. Good start for number 11 for Crestview. Berkey runs baseline, spins back into the lane, can't get that one to drop. And that's the matchup I've been anticipating and looking forward to. Ren Sheets and Beckett Berkey guarding each other. And <laughs> both very, very good basketball players, both offensively and defensively. They're going to challenge each other tonight. Harding wants to go inside. Able to fit it in there. Nice move. Kicks it back out. Off the hands of Ren Sheets and out of bounds. Another nice deflection by Beckett Berkey right there. That ball goes off a of Ren Sheets' foot. Out of bounds. A turnover on the Knights. Couple the length of Shawnee showing itself here early on. A couple deflections that have created turnovers. A couple of substitutions coming into the game for Crestview. Braxton Leith, number five, checks into the game, as does number zero Hayden Parrott. Pair and Leith, both sophomores for Crestview coming off the bench. Spin to the inside, can't get that one to go. But Berkey, you can tell, last couple of trips down, he's been in attack mode. He has, nice job here. Spin to the 10, we see it on the Union Bank instant replay. Draws the contact, he's gonna go to the line. He's an 87.5% free throw shooter. I'm going to call him the leader on the uh, Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw line for his team. He's shot 16 free throws, made 14 up to this point on the young season. Beckett able to connect on his first. Second one's going to be off. Rebound in, in, in the hands of Crestview. They're going to push the pace quickly. Kicks it back out. Parrott for three. That one's going to be no good. Berkey was there for the rebound, but his foot was out of bounds, so it will stay Crestview ball. Good rebound. Again, a little contact, but not enough for a foul to be called, and Beckett just put his toe on the black line. Crestview's going to maintain possession. 6-4 here in the first, 326 left to go. Leith drops it back off to Hefner. He's going to pull up for two. That one's good. Good elevation right there by Tommy Hefner over Nick Pajon. Gives him the bucket, and we're tied up at six, just like we anticipated. Nice cut there by, by number two, Nick Pajon. A curl cut. The Crestview defender ended up trailing. Shawnee takes advantage of it, gets the bucket. Great off-ball movement that time by Pajon as he was able to get inside for the easy layup. Now Crestview looking to answer. Lynch comes around, tries to knock that one away. Ends up in the hands of Crestview, who finds Ren Sheets down low, and he gets on the scoreboard. Yeah, Coach Triplett's not going to be happy with Ren Sheets being that wide open, but it was a nice back cut, and as a result, Crestview gets the bucket. And then in, on the ensuing possession, Shawnee with the turnover. It's a miscommunication that time as Beckett was trying to give it, get it to Trevick, who started to cut inside. Leads into the turnover, so Crestview now has an opportunity to take the lead for the first time tonight. Yeah, now in the game for Shawnee, Tate Bender, number 14, the JV coach, Joe Bender's son. Ren works on the inside. He's going to pick up the offensive foul, though. A great job by Dominic Lynch to take that as he slid over. You're exactly right, Nate. Lynch maybe a little bit of acting there. But he picks up the foul on Ren Sheets. Sheets first foul, the offensive charge against Crestview. And that's something we're going to have to pay attention to. Crestview cannot afford to have Ren Sheets be in foul trouble. Now Trevick Berkey going to work down into the corner. Kicks it back up, time, up high to Goldsberry. And Shawnee right now trying to move some traffic underneath the basket to try to clear some space. Bender. Tries to drive, gets cut off, hands it off to Berkey. He's going to spin off the glass, can't get it to go. Put back no good as well, and we're going to have a foul. So we see it on the Union Bank instant replay. 
Back at Berkey again, one-on-one driving line, attacks Kellen Putman, able to get to the glass, doesn't score, but his teammate, Alex Goldsberry, there to clean it up on the offensive glass, draws the foul. He's going to go to the free throw line. He's four for four on the young season, make it five for five. So Alex Goldsberry steps up to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line, knocks down his first. He now has four points in the quarter. As Rand Sheets got a quick break, he's back in. As Tommy Hefner will take a seat. Goldsberry second shot is up and good. Shawnee back on top, 10-8, 152 left to go in the quarter. Off the made free throw on this possession, Shawnee stays man-to-man. -man. Leith looking for somewhere to go. Spins back towards the basket, gets it off the side of the backboard. Sheets was there to clean it up, but Bender takes it away. He's going to run the floor, lays it off the glass and in. Tate Bender with a tough two point. Yeah, Tate Bender, coast to coast. One of the most improved players on this Shawnee squad coming into this year. Does a nice job. Great quickness. Finishes at the rim. Ren feeds Connor Sheets on the inside. He gets double teamed. Has to kick it back out. Leith for three, and that one's good. Braxton Leith, the sophomore, shoots that basketball with a lot of confidence. Give him the three. Gets it back to a one-point contest. Under a minute left to go here in the quarter. It's a one-point game. Shawnee on top, 12-11. Bender works along the baseline. Back up top. Berkey. Works against Sheets, turnaround jumper, that one's good. Beckett had just been off on his last couple of shots. He's able to get that one to go. Yeah, and Ren Sheets may have gotten away with a foul there on the entry pass, but yeah, he's got to be uh, cautious with his defense having one foul here in the first quarter. Beckett does a nice job of finishing, great turnaround jumper. Good feed on the inside, extra pass down to Sheets. Sheets with the right hand off the glass, no good. Rebound down to Shawnee, Lynch. Picks it up, and he is going to be fouled. As you see Kellen Putnam playing tight defense on the other side, the official says he got a little bit too much arm on that reach. On the Union Bank replay, we see the transition. and Maybe a little bit of a nickel and dimer there, but five fouls to zero, and in the first quarter, we're going to see Shawnee shoot the two-shot foul here on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. So that's that new rule that has come into play. It's, we've had one week to kind of see it and digest it, and right here in the first quarter we get it. Five team fouls it means Shawnee shooting two no matter what kind of foul it is, but those fouls will reset at the beginning of the second. Exactly. We're going to clean it all off here in 16 seconds. And now maybe Shawnee, you're real aggressive here, so Crestview can't run a set here at the end of the quarter. Maybe you give up a couple fouls. I know it's early. Let's see what happens, Nate. Connor Sheets looks to go to the inside, kicks it back over. Here's Hartling drops it off, pull up three. They're going to say before the shot. So a foul is committed. It doesn't cause any harm, just like you were talking. Yeah. They could be aggressive, and no one's going to the free throw line. That was an unintentional, intentional foul by Tate Bender there before the shot, so it's out of bounds. Now it's underneath, so you have your underneath, under out of bounds. That's the score. Let's see what Crestview gets. And that one is blocked. I think that was Bender who reached up and knocked that one away. We'll see if we can get an instant replay when we come back to check it out. But fast-paced action to end the first quarter. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay sponsors Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Shawnee finished the first quarter with a flurry as they have the four-point lead, 15-11. And we got a little bit of everything that we kind of talked about. We thought we were going to see some offense from some of the top guys. We knew that both teams were going to clamp down defensively, but Shawnee just had a little bit too much there in the quarter. They did. They had good transition offense, and they also got themselves to the free throw line. Statistically, overall, Shawnee four for seven from the floor, three for six from two, one for one from three. They were six for eight from the free throw line for 75%. They had three turnovers and five boards. For Crestview, overall, they were 5 for 10, 50%. 4 for 7 from 2, 1 for 3 from 3, 5 rebounds, and 5 turnovers. So Crestview will begin with the basketball here to open the second quarter. A couple of substitutions coming into the game for Shawnee. 
You see Max Goldsberry has come in. Damola Ojo's come in and has Matthew Stiles. Pull up, shot is good by Tommy Hefner. He gets a scoring opened here in the second. Yeah, nice up fake from behind the arc and then gets into the middle of the paint and gets nothing but the bottom of the cotton to get Crestview on the scoreboard here. First possession, second quarter. Back to a one possession game. Bender back up top. Ojo moves it over to Berkey. Beckett moves it back around the perimeter here. Shoney not trying to force anything. Max Goldsberry looked to pull up for three. That one's off the side of the rim. No good. Yeah, his brother Alex started a game with a three. He was sort of the mindset, I'm going to show big brother what I can do as well. Didn't come up with one right there, but the turnover back with Shawnee with the basketball. Shawnee with the two-point lead. Just underway here in the second. Goldsberry gets it back over to Beckett. Beckett going to run baseline off the glass and in. Nice job with the flare screen. Gets Ren Sheets out of position a little bit. And Beckett Berkey takes advantage. The help doesn't rotate over quick enough. Another one-on-one -on -one driving line situation where Shawnee is able to get to the window. Hartling stops, jumps, he gets it to go. Yeah, Jarrett Harding again. Last two possessions, Crestview has been able to get into the middle of the paint. Both teams driving it at each other with success. Now Bender going to pull it out, slow things down a little bit. As Styles moves it back over. Shawnee doing a nice job moving the ball around the perimeter, trying to open some lanes. They really are. I love how they are reversing the basketball. And whenever you swing the ball side from side, you get some good things happening. Deep three from Bender doesn't go. The Knights come up with the rebound. Hefner brings it up for Crestview. Going to pull it back and get the offense set. Guarded by Styles. Got to think Crestview would like to start getting things going on the inside a little bit more, but this Indian defense so far has been smothering. Pull up jumper no good by Harding. Tracked down by Goldsberry. Yeah, Crestview looking for the flex cutter on that offensive possession, running the pattern flex offense right there. Settle for the 15-footer. But there's Harding with the steal. Harding going to take it all the way in off the glass. Harding now with eight points here in the half. Again, Coach Triplett was concerned about those live ball turnovers. We can play good half-court man, but you can't play defense against a live ball turnover that leads to the layup like right there. Bender tried to explode there to get to the lane, but a little bit too much. Can't get it to go, but a great answer on the other side by Hefner as he gets his second basket here of the quarter, and Crestview has their first lead of the game. Yeah, Tommy Hefner with six points here in the first half overall, having a really good first half as the point guard for Crestview and finding opportunities to score. Berkey trying to work through some traffic. Can't get it to go down. Shawnee, though, able to gather up that rebound. Off the glass for Max Goldsberry as he turns with a little bit of a smile after that bank. And he's going to put Shawnee back on top, 20 to 19. Going to have a timeout on the floor. It'll be a full timeout, so we'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 4.36 left to go here in the half. Shawnee takes the timeout. Get a couple of changes in it after that three-pointer by Max Goldsberry. As we see Nick Pajon, Dominic Lynch, and Alex Goldsberry come back into the game. Three-pointer on its way. That one rattles down. A big three-pointer by Tommy Hefner, who is on fire here in the second. He is, and that's great inside-out action from in the post out to the shooter. Tommy Hefner has his feet set and sticks it from behind the arc. Harding was falling out of bounds, tried to save it, but ends up knocking it into the Shawnee bench. So it'll go back to the Indians. Yeah, Harding has a couple steals out front. Almost comes up with his third one right there. But as you said, he goes out of bounds. Shawnee going to retain possession. As we said, Shawnee's doing a great job of reversing the basketball in the half-court offense. But when Harding's able to come up top, it's been a little more challenging. they got to make sure that pass is there on the reversal. Pajon had to come off the floor, saw him run down the tunnel to the locker room. I think maybe just a contact issue maybe as he looked all right. But Tate Bender coming back into the game to replace him. 
And we're going to have a foul after the miss. And this one's going to go on Beckett Berkey. Beckett Berkey picks up his first team foul. And with 348 left in the second quarter, that's the first team foul for Shawnee. They have played outstanding, clean defense throughout the first half of this game. So quick discussion from the officials to move the ball over to the sidelines. Barrett going to inbound it. And here's Hefner. Hefner with the hot hand brings it up for the Knights. Trying to get the pick and roll going for Sheets to the inside. Guarded nicely by Shawnee. But now able to find Wren running towards the basket. And I believe this one is going to go on Trevick Berkey. Going to see it here on the Union Bank replay. A nice pass from Braxton Leith into Wren Sheets. Shawnee paying a lot of attention, and rightly so, to Wren Sheets. Tough for Crestview to find him. Leith does right there, and the foul is called. Sheets going to the free throw line. So Ren Sheets steps up to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. He's able to make his first. He's a 71% free throw shooter on the young season, second on this Crestview squad in that category. Sheets able to connect on the second as well. Crestview extends to the largest lead they've had tonight. Four points, 24, 20, 325 left to go here in the quarter. Goldsberry. Look to the inside as they're trying to get Beckett. He's guarded well by Kellen Putnam, so they're going to have to pull it back out. Here's Lynch. Looking and that's for the screen. And we're going to have a whistle. We'll see who they're going to call, and they're going to get this one on Putnam. And that's a change uh, Coach Etzler has made defensively because of the way uh, the fouls are being called a little bit. He's taken Ren Sheets off of... Beckett Berkey and put Kellen Putnam on him in order to keep Sheets from picking up that second foul, that potential second foul here in the first half. Beckett catch and shoot, rattles halfway down but comes out. Rebound down to the Knights. Harding with the basketball in the lane, drops it down to Connor Sheets. Connor turns towards the baseline, gets cut off, has to kick it back out. Crestview does a nice job not panicking to maintain the possession. Here's Harding, working against Trevick. Drops it off to Leaf. Three-pointer on its way, and it rattles down for Parrott, his first basket of the game. Yeah, Hayden Parrott had an outstanding shooting night against Van Wert, a WOSN game last Friday night. Picks up tonight with that three right there as well. Great form, gets the puppy set, sticks it in the basket for the Knights. So Shawnee, even though they had the lead coming out of that first quarter, Actually got, did most of their damage from the free throw line. As you see, Pejan able to pull up for two. That's going to help. And Love his step, his uh, crossover dribble and the attack to the elbow. And nothing but the bottom of the net for Pejan right there. Great move. Here's Harding with the answer. Jared Harding does a great job coming down and quickly answering to push the lead back out to seven. Well, we talked about improvement from week one to week two as we see Trevick Berkey right there. Again, attacking the rim, one-on-one -on -one driving line, kisses it off the window. We talked about that improvement, Nate. Both teams offensively look very, very smooth, and there's a lot of improvement in that category from last week. Good feed on the inside. What a fine Hartling. Right now cannot be stopped here in the second. He now has 11 points here in the second quarter. As a 15 for the game, another miss by Shawnee. Connor Sheets comes up with the rebound. Drops it off to Parrott, lost his footing, has to drop it back over to Sheets. Sheets three-point, no good. But there's Ren Sheets for the putback. Ren Sheets with the offensive board. He leads his squad at eight rebounds per game. Good medicine if you're a Knight fan right there. Anytime Ren Sheets gets an offensive rebound and he's looking to score, good things are going to happen. Shawnee finds themselves down nine. 40 seconds left to go here in the half. Trevor Berkey pulls it all the way out, back right around midcourt. 
Don't think they're necessarily looking to go with one shot here, but if it gets down to around 15, there's Brecken. He's attacking. Goes right at Ren Sheets. Can't get it to go, but Dominic Lynch there for the cleanup. So he gets the put back for two. Great job by Dominic Lynch. He did not give up on that basketball. Hit the offensive glass. Connor Sheets works towards the baseline, kicks it back out to Leith. Four seconds left to go. Parrott. And Trevick Berkey is going to go for the foul, and that was all done because he didn't want Parrott to get by him, and he knew not going to the free throw line anyway. Yeah. Now Trevick does pick up his second personal foul right there, and with 2.5. Here's another rule that really hasn't been talked about. When a foul occurs outside the triangle of the elbows to the corners and around the top of the key, the ball's taken out at the 28-foot mark. So it's a lot harder to get a score here with 2.5. But let's see with uh, Leith running the baseline. They're not going to look down low. Back to Harding. Harding right off the front of the rim. A nice play design that time. Gave Harding an open look, but he can't convert. After one half of play, Crestview's on top of Shawnee, 33-26. We'll step aside and be back with the third quarter here on WOSF. Welcome back to Lapham Gymnasium. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpawk, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen as halftime is just about over here at Shawnee. Crestview on top, 33-26. And, Dave, I know you got some stats there in front of you, some impressive shooting on both sides of the ball. Absolutely. If we look at the visitors first, Crestview, they are 14 for 21 from the floor, 3 for 4 behind the arc. They've had six turnovers, and they have 11 rebounds, two for two from the line. If you're Crestview and Doug Etzler, you're looking at defensively, we've got to do a better job with our one-on-one -on -one driving line defense. Offensively, we're doing a great job at taking advantage of what the defense is giving us. They are paying a lot of attention to Ren Sheets. For Shawnee, nine for 20 from the floor for 45%. Six for eight from the foul line. They were at that number after the first quarter. They didn't shoot a free throw in the second half, or second quarter. Only four turnovers, a real clean half handling the basketball and seven boards. If you're Coach Triplett, you want more communication and you want to be more aggressive on defense. You only had three team fouls the first half. Two of those were of the unintentional, intentional variety. Jared Harding has 15 points against you, and several of those have been off of live ball turnovers. Again, we've initiated and stated that Coach Triplett did not want to see that happen tonight. It has a little bit. It's been advantageous for Jared Harding, and Shawnee has got to take better care of the basketball in the sense of not allowing those live ball turnovers to lead to points. Shawnee will begin with the basketball here to open the third corner as they find themselves down seven. Largest deficit they faced in the first half was nine as they actually had held the lead after one. As you see Alex Goldsberry just take his eye off the basketball that time, off his leg and out of bounds. A little bit of a, just kind of a mental mistake that time out of Goldsberry. Great hustle by Nick Pajon to try and save it. But yeah, first four minutes here, critical for the Indians. Again, who find themselves down here by seven. That turnover right there, they don't get a look. See what Crestview does. Here's Hefner working through some traffic, drops it off to Harding. Harding had the hot hand for Crestview in the first half with 15 points. Three-pointer on its way. That one's no good. Trevick Berkey with the rebound. Trevick gets it back as he's going to go into the lane with the left hand off the glass. Trevick Berkey with two. Sweet left hand there by Trevick Berkey. He can go to his left to his strong hand. Gets the defense off balance. Man, he's going to be really, really, really good. Shawnee fans are going to see that a lot over his career. Drop down to the inside as Wren Sheets goes to work against Berkey. Wren gets his own rebound and put back. Wren Sheets was kept relatively quiet. He did have six points as he gets the scoring open here for the Knights. Excellent stick to by Wren Sheets right there. Missed the initial shot. Didn't get checked out. Attacked the glass. Another offensive rebound. Stick back for Sheets. Here's Trevick Berkey for three. That one's going to be no good. Rebound ends up in the hands of Hefner. So Tommy Hefner moves it up quickly. We're slowing it down now as the offense will get set. 
Look for a ball screen on the wing by Sheets and Harding. Sheets den- or Harding denies it, goes straight to the rim, and he scores. So a little one-on-one driving line defense not brought to the table by Shawnee. Crestview takes advantage of it, but right there we see Dominique Lynch attack. Doesn't come up with the bucket, though. Ball's loose on the floor. Lynch lays out for it, gets it. Pushes it up ahead, extra pass. Beckett able to finish at the basket. Yeah, give the bucket to Beckett Berkey, but give the hustle to Dom Lynch. Great job down on the wood right there to get that turnover against the Knights, and that leads to a live ball turnover bucket for Shawnee. Desperately needed right there. And there's some things you can teach and some things you can't. That 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 thing that athletes have that make them hustle, to make them lay out, to want to get those 50-50 balls, those, that toughness, you can't teach that. And Dominic Lynch has that to, with some to spare. I couldn't agree with you more, Nate. We saw that last week in the opening weekend from Lynch. He's carried on with it right away here this evening as well. Great, great hustle by Dominic Lynch. Tate Bender into the game for Shawnee with the basketball. Drops it over to Berkey, moves it around to the perimeter. Beckett goes on an attack mode, right hand floater. That one hangs on the rim but drops down. Connor Sheets comes up with the rebound. I love the idea. I'm sure Coach Triplett said, let's get Ren Sheets in foul trouble, but you got to stop and then go through the defense. Beckett allows Ren Sheets off the hook there by not attacking him with both feet and his shoulders going right into him. Here's Hefner working against Pajon, drops it off. Harding. Has a little bit of space, attacks, kicks it back out. Putnam for three, rattles around, no good. Does everything but goes down for Putman. Shawnee in transition. Bender lost his footing. Able to get it over to Goldsberry, though. Shawnee maintains possession. Back at Berkey, he's going to get to the lane. Tries to go up and under, but he's going to be fouled. And that's a big foul as that is going to go on Ren Sheets. And that'll be his second. We see it on the Union Bank replay again. It does look like one of the adjustments that Coach Triplett wants his team, and, and specifically Beckett Berkey, to make, and that is attack Ren Sheets. He does so right there, finds himself at the famous recipe chicken free throw line. So Beckett not able to connect on the first. He will have a second shot from the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. A rare miss for Beckett Berkey at the free throw line this in the, this season in the early going. As we said, he leads this squad for Shawnee at the free throw line right around the 87% mark. And he is 0 for 2 on that trip, so the deficit stays at 7 as Harding will bring it up for Crestview. Oh, shoot, that's Hefner. Hefner drops it off to Leaf, who's checked into the game. Parrot head fake, gets it down low to Sheets, and he's going to be fouled. And this one is going to go on Beckett Berkey. Not a bad foul. Ren Sheets had position. He was going to drop step and go to the basket there. Not a bad foul at all for Shawnee. That is now four total fouls on Shawnee as they have played a pretty clean game here through about two and a half quarters. All four fouls belong to the Berkey family. They go right back to Ren Sheets again on the inbound play. Give the dime to Hayden Parrott. Ren Sheets finishes at the hole. Lynch back into attack mode, gets to the rim, and he's going to be fouled. He'll make another trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. We see it on the Union Bank instant replay. I really like when Shawnee is attacking in transition. Crestview's not getting back on defense quickly enough. Lynch, again, as we talked about, the hustle he's brought to tonight's game, gets to the rim, draws the foul, makes that first free throw. Lynch now four for five from the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Looking to make it five of six. And he can't as that one rattles out. Rebound comes down to Sheets. Hefner puts the offense in motion, gets it over to Parrott. You see Shawnee trying to play man-to-man here to keep things tight. Extra help coming over to work against Sheets. And he's going to get called as it looked like it believe that it was either a travel or? I think they called three seconds, uh, Nate. I think Dave Benfield with the call in there. Saw the ball move around in his hands and the whistle come, but we're we're a little shielded from our vantage point Mm -hmm. from the official underneath. But either way, it's a turnover. 
Beckett gets cut off, has to kick it back out. Extra pass over to Lynch. Lynch for three. That one's no good, but Trevitt comes up with the rebound underneath the basket. Puts it back up, and that one's good for two. Another nice job by Trevitt Berkey to attack the glass. Gets the rebound and the stick back. Shawnee takes the timeout. So we have a Metzger Financial Services timeout. It's a full one, so we'll step aside as well, and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. So Shawnee takes a timeout there, Nate, and I think the purpose of that timeout is just to talk to the squad, Coach Triplett, sharing with the guys, we're doing some good things, but we're leaving some opportunities on the floor at the offensive end. Let's continue to be more efficient. And defensively, let's pick up our pressure a little bit, and we're seeing that on display right here. Yeah, they need to get a couple of stops. As they've been a lot more aggressive here in this half. Nice block by Trevick Berkey. What a great job to not pick up the foul. And Shawnee now has an opportunity to draw a little closer. Nice fake handoff by Lynch as he had a wide open lane. Dom lane Dominic Lynch. He gets two more here in the quarter to make it 39-35. Sort of looked like a double dribble, but it actually got deflected by a Crestview player, and then Lynch took advantage of everybody thinking he had lost his dribble and got to the rim and scored. Nice job. Parrott with the left hand drops it off. Now Hefner has this one poked away, but ends up back in the hands of Lee. Dropped off to Parrott. Three-pointer on its way in. Good. Hayden Parrott with his second three of the game. Nice composure, good form. Does not look like a sophomore with that shot out there. That was a big bucket for Crestview as Shawnee has definitely picked up their defensive intensity. Beckett drives into the lane. He's going to be fouled. He'll make another trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Here we see it on the Union Bank replay. Beckett Berkey. He's got the car keys now because he is driving hard to the basket and good things are happening. It's either a free throw because of the foul or he's finishing at the rim. Braxton Leith was whistled for the foul. That is the third team foul for the Knights here in this quarter. Coach Triplett, his nonverbals, he just sort of dropped his shoulders because that is Beckett's third missed free throw in a row. Very uncharacteristic of him. So Beckett Berkey struggling from the free throw line here in the third quarter. He is 0 for 3 with one more remaining. 2.01 left to go in the quarter. Second shot on its way, and this one's good. Nice adjustment by Beckett Berkey to go 1 for 2 at that trip at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. So now it's Connor Sheets' turn, drops it in the inside. Wren. Looks to go through traffic, gets it to go. And we have a whistle. We'll see who they blow this one on. And it is going to go on number five. That is Matthew Stiles, who had checked into the game during the last stoppage. And that is his first here of the night. A little duck in play right there. The ball went to the elbow to Connor Sheets. And we saw the Sheets to Sheets connection. High low game. Wren sealed his man, ducked in, got the ball, the hoop in the arm, converts on the free throw. So Ren Sheets goes and makes the and one from the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. 45-36, Crestview on top. Minute 30 left to go here in the quarter. Goldsberry tries to drop it inside to Lynch, has that one taken away. At the last second, Kellen Putman stepped in front of the passing lane, comes away with the steal. An opportunity for the Knights to push this into a double-digit lead. Ren Sheets with the basketball, has to get rid of it as Parrott will pull it back out and let the offense get set. Styles with the defense, trying to have Parrott move the basketball, and he does. Nice drive by Putnam. He kicks it out to Sheets. Sheets finds Wren. Wren Sheets on the inside, has to get rid of it as the Indians' defense did a nice job collapsing. They sure did. Nice job defensively, taking away the look. Crestview with some good patience. An excellent hustle play that time by Harding as he was able to save that one from being an over and back. Got it over to Connor Sheets, but when it was all said and done, still ended up in a turnover by the Knights. Yeah, really good defensive possession for Shawnee right there. Let's see if they convert. Keeps it from going to a double-digit lead. They score here, get themselves right back into this one. 
45-36, 40 seconds left to go. Bender drives baseline, spins back around to the lane, gets cut off, has to get rid of it. 30 seconds left to go as Shawnee looks to see if they can't score here. Step back, shot on its way, no good. Rebound down to Harding. Harding with 20 seconds left to go for the Knights. Here's Parrott as he's guarded tightly by Lynch. He's not going to give him any space, and we're going to have a whistle. Again, breaking up the fluidity of the game at the end of the quarter seems to be a coaching technique that Coach Triplett wants his guys to execute, and they have done that at the end of the first quarter, the end of the second, and now here at the end. And again, you take the ball out at the 28-foot line or under the basket four feet off the key line, Crestview, not an opportunity to score right away, but let's see what they get coming out of the sideline out of bounds. Putnam had to pick up his dribble, ends up in the hands of Hefner. Deep three on its way. That one's no good. Harding somehow ends up with that and gets it to go. A very unfortunate series of events for Shawnee, but Crestview does a great job at the end of the quarter. They get a big three-pointer, and they're now up double digits. We'll step aside and be back with the fourth quarter here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Union Bank. Union Bank committed to you. Fourth quarter just about underway here at Lappin Gymnasium. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. And Dave, you know, a lot of the same there in that third quarter for Crestview as they really finished on a flurry and were able to extend that lead to 12. Yeah, Coach Triplett took that timeout and he stressed to his guys to bring a little more defensive intensity to the game. They did. But Crestview was able to get some fortuitous bounces. We saw it on the last play of the quarter. Jared Harding, Johnny on the spot, behind the arc, says, I, I guess I'll shoot it. And he drained it to put Crestview up 12. And so we'll see how Shawnee wants to come out and play it. They're going to have to get a little bit more uh, aggressive on defenses. they got to get themselves some extra possessions here. But Crestview will begin with the basketball. Tommy Hefner bringing it up for the Knights, guarded by Lynch. The Shawnee Indians defense looking for a stop. Come out in that zone defense, trying to see if maybe they can't force a turnover. As Crestview just has to move it around up top and through the perimeter. Yeah, I think Coach Etzler is going to be real patient against this zone, let that clock run with a 12-point lead. And Shawnee has switched to man-to-man. -man. They tried to see if maybe that zone couldn't force a turnover. When it didn't work, they didn't go to that man. Nice hands by Ojo as Demola Ojo had checked in towards the end of the third, stays in here in the fourth, knocks that one out of bounds. Trevick Berkey is going to come back into the game for Shawnee. Overall in the third quarter, Crestview shot 60%, 6 for 10 from the floor. They had nine boards, five turnovers. Shawnee was 50% from the floor, 4 for 8. Two for seven from the line, two turnovers, four rebounds. Crestview shot one free throw. They were one for one. Renchit leaves that one short. Here goes Bender. He's going to go all the way off the glass. Was looking for contact. Didn't get it. Lynch can't get the put back. Ends up in the hands of Renchit. Again, transition offense. I like how Shawnee's attacking. They just got a jump stop right there. Get your feet under you. Get a good look. Hefner pulls up for two, and that one's good. Tommy Hefner gets the scoring started here in the fourth. As Shawnee tries to move quickly. That shot's going to be off, going to go out of bounds. They're going to say last touch by Sheets. And that's a hustle play right there by Beckett Berkey. Ren Sheets had everything but that ball secured, but Berkey got a hand on it, and it goes off on Sheets. And Shawnee keeps the ball, but there's a steal. But Shane, Shawnee's going to maintain possession, Nate. So now Bender with the basketball. Gets it over to Trevick. 6.25 left to go in the game. Shawnee with some work to do. I feel like they have a run in them, Nate. They just got to find a foundation, and this is a good place to find it. Berkey goes right at Sheets, and they're going to say he was fouled as Ren Sheets will pick up his third. Two things happening here as we see it on the Union Bank replay. Berkey attacking, but Crestview not rotating defensively to give Ren Sheets some help. It's all Ren Sheets on an island with with uh, Beckett Berkey, and Beckett Berkey's going to win that battle more often than not. 
Crestview defensive principles, pack line defense, help side defense. It's got to be more prevalent or Berkey's going to keep attacking the rim the rest of this fourth quarter. Berkey's second shot from the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line is no good as he comes up empty on that trip. That is now, let's see, my, my unofficial count. I believe that's eight missed free throws on the ninth for the Indians. Nice inbounds play that time. That one hung up on the rim but didn't go down. And a steal by Berkey. Berkey gets it over to Lynch. Lynch in the air. Can't get it to go down, but now he'll make a trip to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. We're going to see him right here on the Union Bank instant replay. A nice steal by Trevick Berkey. Gets it to Lynch, and Lynch does what he does. He attacks the glass. Good things happen when you do that. Draws the foul. He's shooting two. Lynch's first shot is up and good. Lynch now five of seven from the line. Yeah, Crestview a little lackadaisical with the basketball and with their defensive principles here at the beginning uh, of the fourth quarter. They got to shore that up or Shawnee will jump right back in. Like we said, I think Shawnee has a run in them yet. They got to D it up here to make that happen. Second shot's no good for Lynch. Crestview with the basketball. Hefner works against Dom. As Crestview, they can be as patient as they want. Tries to get the back door. It's taken away by Shawnee. Pajon going to go all the way in. Works against Connor Sheet. Just gets rid of it as he was trying to draw the whistle. Bender for the deep three. That one's good. A big made three-pointer by Tate Bender. Makes this a 10-point game. Big shot by Tate Bender. And Coach Triplett, he's going to call timeout right off the made three. Nothing but the bottom of the cotton. It's a Metzger Financial Services timeout. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Shawnee takes the timeout after the big made three-pointer by Tate Bender as Shawnee knows they need a run. You mentioned it, Dave. You felt like they have a run in them. They've gotten a couple of stops, a couple of made baskets. They're getting to the free throw line, not converting the best right now, but they're giving themselves a chance. Yes, getting themselves a chance, getting some deflections. You know, this Crestview squad, state runner-up last year, four starting seniors, a senior that came off the bench. They're no longer here. These young guys have got to figure out how to play with the lead and in crunch time. Bender almost able to poke that one away, but a nice job by Hefner to keep control, but then as he tries to hand it off, it goes out of bounds. So Shawnee is getting the turnovers and the stops that they need, but they got to get something going here on offense. They most certainly are. They, they're doing what they need to do defensively. Catch a break right there as the ball goes off the official, but the official was standing out of bounds, so that makes him part of the floor, and if he's out of bounds and it hits him, that's a turnover. The other official comes in and helps him out a little bit. I think Crestview the, with the basketball. I think the uh, official is near the sideline wasn't sure where he was on the correct. floor. I think he thought correct. he was still in bounds. The other official saw it, so yeah, made the correct work. call and changed it. Good work. So Fortunate play for Crestview here as they try to play with the lead. Five minutes left to go here in the fourth. Crestview has switched to a four-guard offense now to handle that pressure that they're seeing from Shawnee. Shawnee can afford to be aggressive. Still no team fouls here in the quarter, so all five to give as you see Bender try to get after it. Harding fights through it, drops it off. This one's the sheet. Sheets create some space, and he's able to finish. Jarrett Harding able to penetrate to the middle of the key, draws the defense. Give him the assist. He had 13 of those assists coming in to this game. Gets one right there. Little stutter step by Dom. Gets him to the rim as he's able to put that one down for two. Yeah, does a nice job attacking the rim. And the stutter step, as you said, helps out. A good foul on the floor that time on the other side by Shawnee because if they don't get that foul, that is an easy basket for Crestview. But instead, it'll be... Inbounded underneath the basket. Yeah, that's one of those fouls. You're like, okay, it's a foul, but, man, we had a bucket. Their best defense was the whistle. <laughs> if you're a Crestview fan, that's the way you feel. If you're Shawnee, you're like, okay, we've got a chance to reestablish. Let's keep them from scoring right here. 
Dominic Lynch was whistled for that foul. Aiden Parrott looking to create a little bit of space. Crestview can afford to be as patient as they want, but you almost wonder sometimes when teams start doing this and they're more looking for those extra passes, if it gets them out of their flow offensively, it almost does more harm than good. Great point, Nate. You forget to look at what is the focus of the game. It's that goal up there. They don't call it a goal for no other reason than the fact that you want to put the ball through it. You quit looking at that, you can put yourself in a position to have some turnovers and get the other team right back into this. I think we're seeing a little bit out of the Knights right now as they're just trying to eat clock, but that's causing them not to necessarily go into the attack mode, not look into the inside like we have seen. So you got to be strong with the basketball. you got to put it in low ball position. You're looking for a 90% shot. You want to get a layup, but Shawnee's defense there really swarming. Good feed to Harding. Harding at to the rim, and he gets it to go. And that is what you have to do. If you're going to have those long, sustained possessions, you've got to finish them. The other side, a quick shot by Beckett. Berkey goes down. A nice answer for Shawnee. Yeah, great answer for Shawnee. Beckett Berkey, we were right on that angle. It looked good from the moment it left his fingertips. Beckett Berkey, the leading scorer for Shawnee, taking the game on his shoulders offensively, he averages 18 and a half points per game, 11 thus far tonight. They had a foul right before that as Tate Bender gets whistled for his first. So now three team fouls for the Indians here in the quarter as Lynch gets aggressive. He's going to get whistled for the foul. Or no, excuse me, it was going to be a timeout first before that. So a full timeout by Crestview. We'll step aside as well and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So Crestview took the timeout as they did not want to lose possession along that far sideline. Good timeout that time by Coach Etzler and his staff. 3.15 left to go, and they have the nine-point lead. Yeah, I think what he's talking about is we need to have really good spacing right now, gentlemen. We don't want to have two blue shirts side by side to allow a double or a triple team to occur. We've got to have our spacing, take care of the basketball, and be ready for that defensive intensity coming from the Indians. Here's Parrott with the basketball guarded by Lynch. And this one's going to be taken away. Bender does a great job of reading that. Goes all the way in for two. 54-47, Crestview on top. Nice job there by Bender to get the bucket. And they're going to say not touched by Lynch as that one went off of Ren Sheets, and it is going to go back to the Indians. You can see Coach Etzler not happy about that call, but a good break for Shawnee. We, yep, and here comes Shawnee right now. Big possession. Here's that run we talked about. Chance to get it to four or five with a bucket. Berkey thought about it, puts it on the floor. He's going to drive, gets cut off by Sheets, tries to go over the top, no good. But Lynch was right there, and he's going to be fouled. Can't get that one to go down, but he'll make another trip to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line where he has been the most successful of the Indians so far tonight. Yeah, great penetration again. Crestview did rotate to help out with Beckett Berkey's penetration, but then that left them susceptible to the offensive board. Lynch gets it and gets fouled. He's back at the free throw line. Able to connect on his first. That is a big free throw. Makes this a two-possession game. He now has 12 points on the night. That one's going to be no good. Ren Sheath comes up with the rebound. 54-48, two-possession game, 2.20 left to go. Lynch guards Hefner tight. Shawnee trying to create another turnover. As they've been able to get stops in the last few trips down the floor. Shawnee being really aggressive on defense, overplaying, susceptible to a back cut, but it's so hard to see that back cut because of the pressure on the basketball by Shawnee. Again, their defensive intensity, it has just ramped up exponentially in the fourth quarter here. Uh, you might say if they'd played with this intensity the whole game, we might be looking at a totally different score on the board right now. 
Going to have a whistle. I, Hayden Parrott does a nice job of drawing that whistle as he, he created that contact, and that's just a heads-up play by Parrott. Yeah, nice job by the sophomore right here. That's what we see it on the Union Bank replay. We talked about this defensive intensity. I think regardless of the outcome of the score, Coach Triplett, he's really going to break this down on the film and show this to his players about, hey, this is what we have to bring for 32 minutes, not just when we're behind down the stretch. We have the foul committed there, and Hayden Parrott's going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw Line. That is the 15th foul, so that is a costly one as Tate Bender was trying to force another turnover. So from here on out, any foul, Crestview will be going to the free throw line to shoot two. Parrott one for two on the year. Parrott, that's a big free throw as he's able to knock that one down. It's his first trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line tonight. He's got one more shot coming as a couple of substitutions come into the game. Shawnee's got to look for a bucket early in the possession. It's got to be a quality look, too. You can't just throw something at the backboard, at the rim, because that's just a disguised turnover. they got to look for a quality shot early in the possession. Here they come. And how about Hayden Parrott, though, stepping up to that free throw line here late in the fourth quarter, knocking down two big free throws. Lynch looks to drive, goes to the rim. He's going to get the whistle in the end one. Hooping the harm for Dominique Lynch. Who else but Dominique Lynch on the Union Bank replay, attacking the rim, being aggressive. Going to go to the free throw line. Crestview tried to take the charge. They just were not in position. Got to be able to take that right between uh, the shoulders. Didn't happen. Lynch, chance for the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Lynch's shot is up, and it is good. Dom has pulled it back within five. 139 left to go. A big possession here for the Knights. And this one given away. Hefner just lost the handles on it. Fed up ahead to Berkey. A great job by Trevick to grab that and control it. To, it almost looked like that one was destined to go out of bounds. Not only does he get it, he gets it up. It's a one-possession game. One-possession game, a turnover, as you said. Berkey takes it to the rim. Here we go, Nate. We got a timeout on the floor. We'll take one as well. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Shawnee takes the timeout as they have pulled back within one possession, 56, 53, 125 left to go. And I can't help but think about what we talked about earlier in this quarter. Crestview was going for those long, sustained possessions. They came up empty on quite a few of those, and that left that door open. Just a crack for Shawnee, and they kicked it down. Yeah, they have taken advantage of the opportunity. Crestview has to execute now, see if they can get the ball in the half court, if they can run a set, or if they got to look to attack because of the Shawnee aggressive defense. There's a double team. Shawnee does not have a foul to give. Crestview still has one left. His body's flying all over the floor. Bender goes up against Parrott, guards him tightly. Parrott looking for somewhere to go with the basketball. Has to get rid of it quickly, and we're going to have a timeout by Crestview just in the nick of time. We will stay here as well as it looked, it looked like we were right on the verge of that five-second call right before Coach Etzler gets the timeout. Yeah, great timeout by Coach Etzler. Close to a five-second call, close to a possible turnover. As we said, as we've seen a little bit with the aggressiveness of the Shawnee defense, the one thing Crestview wasn't doing that entire possession, they weren't looking at the basket, Nate. They weren't looking to score, and they weren't getting a foul. They've got to penetrate gaps now and look to the rim, look for wrench sheets around the basket. You know, I think one of the things, too, coming down the stretch, Crestview has got to get the ball into the hands of their playmaker. Ren Sheets has been too quiet here in the fourth quarter. they got to find a way to get him involved if they want to try to put this one away. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Ren's got to come up off the block a little bit here, maybe set a screen and roll, but they've got to find the junior, the starter from last year, the first-team Northwest Conference player from last year. 
he's got to show some leadership here on the floor. Not necessarily with his mouth. He's sort of a quiet kid, but he has to be aggressive offensively for Crestview. 101 left to go. Three-point game. Crestview with the basketball. His aunt goes out, guards him tightly. Parrott fights through the contact, pulls it back out. As Trevick quickly goes out, he's going to foul. As This one's going to go against Kellen Putnam. Putnam is going to take his first trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line tonight. Kellen Putman, he faced pressure last week. The Knights were down one against Miller City late. He hit a free throw to tie it and sent it into overtime. He's got two right here. Kellen Putnam had not scored yet tonight. It is a great time for his first point as he pushes that back out to a two-possession game. Four for five on the free throw line now for the season. Putnam second shot on its way. This one's going to be no good. Rebound comes down to Shawnee. Four-point deficit, 50 seconds left to go. Shawnee's going to have to go quickly. Got a mismatch on Beckett. Berkey with Leach, Leith guarding him. The help never comes when I thought that maybe Wren was going to drop down as Beckett tried to take advantage of it, and he's going to go to the free throw line for his trouble. Yeah, we see the Union Bank replay. They do the they switch. Does Leith and Wren Sheets not able to come back? And as you said, no help. Berkey on the free throw line again. So that is the third foul for Leith here tonight as Berkey leaves his first one short. Still got the second one now. Able to cut the lead to three with a make. Look for Shawnee to be aggressive full court defensively. If it gets across half, they'll call the timeout. Even on the miss. Back at Berkey unable to connect. He's now 0 for 4 from the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line here in the quarter. Trevick going to get whistled for the foul as Wren now will take a trip to the free throw line. And that's exactly what Coach Etzler wants to see right there. Wren sheet. Renshieds taking care of the basketball, drawing the foul, going to the free throw line where he shoots 71%, second on this team for Crestview. Sheets first free throw is up and it is good. And Coach Etzler, he's going to take a 30 second timeout here as we take the break between free throws. So we'll stay here. As we look over tonight's scores and looking through the scorebook, Renshi has come up huge. He's been consistent for this team. That second quarter really is what kind of separated this game. It was a 22-11 to 11 quarter in favor of the Knights, and the story of that second quarter was Jared Whirling, or Hartling, excuse me, as he was able to pretty much do anything he wanted out on the floor, made quite a few baskets, Came out into the third quarter. Crestview kept going. Shawnee's done a nice job here in the fourth quarter, but with 30 seconds left to go and Ren Sheets at the free throw line, they may be running out of time. Yeah, you know, Shawnee outscored Crestview by four in the first quarter. Crestview won the middle two quarters, 22 to 11 and 15 to 10. Right now, the fourth quarter is a 17 to 10 Shawnee quarter as far as winning the quarter, but it may not be enough with Sheets making that second free throw to push the lead back to six. 59-53, Shawnee running out of time. That one's going to get turned over. Great defense by the Knights. And Hayden Parrott is going to go to the free throw line. He is two for two here in the fourth. A great coaching piece right there. A change for Crestview. They come out in a 1-3-1 zone. They trap the corner and they get the turnover. And Hayden Parrott has an opportunity to put this one in the books with a couple made free throws. But because of the penetration that Shawnee was getting against the Knights, coming off of that second made free throw in the timeout, Coach Etzler goes to the zone, and it works to perfection. Parrott shot is up. It is no good. So still a little bit of life here for Shawnee. Let's see if Parrott is able to connect on this second. Nobody down, so Shawnee if, can get this easy rebound. If Parrott misses, they'll be able to push the tempo. Second shot is good, though. Three-possession game. Crestview's going to stay in the 1-3-1 zone. Here's Bender. Has to get rid of it. Extra pass. Running out of time. Bender into the lane. Let's that one go. No good. 13 seconds left to go. Bender going to pick up the foul. I believe that's going to be his fifth, and he just fouled out of this game. Great effort by Shawnee here in the fourth quarter. 
fought their way back into it, cut it to three. Crestview, with all intents and purposes, they had to win this game twice tonight, Nate. Yeah, Shawnee, they never went away. They were very resilient, and they got this one close. But Crestview, you mentioned, you know, this is a team that has a lot of young players having to fill a lot of very big shoes. And part of growing as a team, especially when you're young, is learning to play with the lead. That was something that they experienced tonight. They almost let it get away from them, but they did a nice job of adjusting to come away with the win. Yeah, and, and you know, Ren Sheet stepped up there. As we said, he needed to late in the fourth quarter. And so did Hayden Parrott did some nice things. Big three right there. 61-56, and that is going to be the final score as Crestview holds on. They come to Lapham Gymnasium. They knock off the Indians. We'll step aside and be back to talk about it on WOSN. Yeah. Welcome back to Lapham Gymnasium, where tonight the Crestview Knights have defeated the Shawnee Indians 61-56. I'm with head coach Doug Etzler. And, Doug, a great win for your young team. Tell us a little bit about the game in the sense of how, basically, we felt you had to win the game twice tonight. Yeah, I agree. I thought... Early on, a key was for us, number one, getting off to a good start. And I thought we did a good job. Even though we didn't hit some shots early, we got really good shots. And I think that paid off down the stretch. When we executed offensively, we were pretty good. We got really efficient shots. They did a great job of trying to bottle Ren and Connor up inside. And our, our perimeter guys hit shots early, hit shots continuously through the third quarter. And then, like you said, young team, we made some big mistakes in the third, uh, fourth quarter. But I'm proud of the way we finished the game by hitting free throws down the stretch with our you know, inexperienced team. We got some guys that have been around, but now they're in leadership roles. We got some young guys that's the first time out here, and we're going to make some mistakes. It's going to make me old, but <laughs> I, I like the way they finished the game off. And you're right. You do have some guys that have been around, but you're asking for leadership from them. One of those who had 22 points for you tonight, Jarrett Harding, would you talk about his play this evening? Yeah, he, he was huge for us tonight, and he's coming off a weekend where he played extremely well but didn't shoot well. And I, I love the way that he just stayed with it this week, didn't get discouraged. You know, we talked to him about you don't have to score it to be a good player for us. And he, I think he had seven and six assists uh, the, the weekend ago. And tonight it was his turn to, to hit shots, and he did a great job of stepping up. Didn't force anything, and he's a good player for us, and, and we're proud of the way he played tonight and hope he can carry that going through the future. Going through the future again, you come right back tomorrow night. You play Parkway, but you're 3-0 and right now. An exciting time for this squad. Again, especially coming back with a team that made it to the state championship game, finishes state runners up. you got to be pleased again with your young guys. Yeah, real pleased. I think a lot of guys underestimated us this year with what we lost. We lost a lot of really good players, but we have a lot of really good players that are returning, just like you said earlier, just new roles for them, and they're going to grow. We hope to continue to get a little bit better each game. Played a really quality opponent on the road, and to go win here was big, and then we get right back at it tomorrow and get an early morning preparation, and Parkway's going to bring it. They've played extremely well so far. They're going to be very physical, and our guys are going to have to execute to get out of there with a win. Well, again, congratulations on the win tonight. Good luck as you continue down the road. Thank you. Appreciate it. At this time, we'll bring Nate Garlic back into the camera, and we'll talk about our Stolly Insurance Award winner. Now take a look at tonight's Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. Check out the highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. And, and Dave, you guys spent some time talking about it, well, you and Coach. There, there was one player that really stood out for the Knights tonight, and that was Jared Harding. Yeah, Jarrett Harding, he got it going tonight. Last week, as Coach alluded to, he didn't really score for Crestview, but he had 13 assists in two games. Tonight, he put the ball in the bucket, and in the second and third quarter where Crestview and Chris increased their lead, he was a vital component of what Crestview did offensively. Yeah, it was a great game on both sides. It got away from Shawnee a little bit there in that third quarter. They did a great job of showing some resilience to get back into this one. And you told, you talked about it with Coach. They kind of had to win this one twice. But when it was all said and done, the Crest Unites did just enough to come away with the victory. That's going to wrap it up for us here at Lapham Gymnasium. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. I'd like to thank our entire crew as well, everybody working the cameras, working back behind the scenes, getting everything running for us. We appreciate you guys as always. One final time, the Crestview Knights come away with the victory. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.